Welcome to Rational Speakeasy. Or should that be Rational Pub? Maybe it should even be Rational, let's all go out and have a drink. I'm joined today at the table by Sarah. Sarah, thank you so much for coming in and a special anniversary, Sarah's 10th anniversary at the Speakeasy, 3rd and Main. Sarah, welcome to the table. Thank you, Nigel. <laughs> that was an accomplishment and a half, 10 years. Yes. So tell me a little bit about, especially uh, the last couple of years when we were going through the COVID thing. That must have been so hard keeping the business running. You know, it was terrifying initially. Yeah, it was really like getting the rug pulled out from underneath you. Um, staff was in a panic. Everybody was like, the whole world was like, what is going on? And um, it took us a little while to adjust. You know, it, we came together initially as a staff and we talked about things and then all the different programs got put into place. And it actually was a really interesting, it was 10 months that we were closed. So upon reopening with all the restrictions and a different way of operating and time frames being closed at 9 p.m., 10 p.m., 11 p.m., um, just figuring out how to maneuver, we came back stronger than we were prior to COVID. So, it, you know, looking back in hindsight, for a while it was really a scary time to go through, but then we, we really enjoyed a lot of our time because we're really close-knit staff. So yeah. we went out into nature and played on paddle boards and <laughs> barbecued and I mean, we were all together all the time anyway. So we're just like a big family. Right. That's what, so, I, that's what I've heard from a lot of the staff is that it is a big family. It really is. And that's such a nice way to treat staff. That's how I, you know, that was part of my motto when I, when I decided I was going to go in business is I wanted to be treated, doing to others as you have them doing to you. So right. I'm going to treat people the way I want to be treated. And I know that in my experience, um, oftentimes I was misunderstood and, you know, or labeled and then treated a certain way. And it was, it could be very frustrating, especially when you're younger mm -hmm. and you just feel like you, I'm being misunderstood. Nobody understands me. And um, so... It, it, it works both ways. We are at a good speed, a good momentum moving forward all the time. January 28th, 2023 is 10 years from January 28th, 2013. Nice. 10 years to the day. But of course, you, had, you actually took over the property, what, five or six months before you officially opened. Is correct. that correct? Yeah, we, we obtained the space in June of 2012, but it took a whole full six months to to get it to how you wanted it, it. put it back together again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, because really, you turned it from uh, what's the the correct expression here? A spit and sawdust type establishment to the speakeasy. Thank you. I, Thank you. you know, I love it. Thank you. I yeah. love, I love it down you. there. <laughs> and I think I've said this to you before, and I, I think I've even said it on camera, but where my daughter works in Hollywood, they've got a real speakeasy that has been put in, in mothballs ever since the 20s in her building. Really? Yeah. And um, only a few people have seen it recently, and luckily enough, when I was out there, um, she took, me, took, took us into it. And that's why I am so happy with what you've done, because pretty similar. Really? Oh, absolutely. You've not shared you this You nailed with it. Me. Now, there were no LED lights and there were no flashing lights, but when it comes to the decor itself, like especially in the, in, in the front part, yeah. I mean, that, that could be picked up, moved back to the 1920s, dumped in a speakeasy, and everyone would just walk in and go, yep. Yeah. I mean, it's... It's, it's not absurd at all. I... I Last Friday, Saturday, I was in my office, which is close by the front door, and I was doing some paperwork, and the, the door chimes when the door opens, so mm -hmm. I heard it, caught my attention, and these, I could tell they were young just by their, the way they were interacting with one another, but the first thing one of the guys said was, what the heck, did we just walk into our grandma's living room? <laughs> <laughs> well, actually. And for, for a split second, I was like, oh. <gasps> No, yeah. and then I was like, that's okay, yeah. Compliment. Grandma, that's where all of this kind of stemmed from was my grandma and her idea of 
what classy was and no it really works the place works and it's such a lot people don't realize just how big it is yeah I love doing they that. Think, they think it's just the bar area, but of course you've got the whole back room, which is probably, what, three times bigger than the actual yeah. bar area. So, quick little story. Last week I was down there later than usual, and we were open for business, and there was a young man there, and my bartender was like, he would like to speak with you, and he had flown in from Los Angeles. He was with NBC News, oh, Dateline, really? specifically. And he wanted to capture some photos on the story they were doing, but that's a whole conversation. Um, so he thought he was in just this little bar yeah, area. Yeah. And this, I love to do this. And we sat and talked for a good 15 minutes. And I said, did you make your way to the back? And he was like, no, well, let me show you. I'll give you the little tour. And when you turn the corner, everybody, their first, it's always the same, their reaction. Yeah, because you've got that beautiful, oh my goodness. beautiful long what? hall. Yeah. And what is most strange about the hall area is the acoustics are so good. Yeah. Because even if you're sitting right at the back, as far away from the stage as you can get, it still comes in with good yeah. clarity. Yeah. It's an amazing little room. It yeah, really is. It really is. I didn't stumble on it, but I didn't realize just how special that room was. until. And I'm glad I left a lot of the things as they were mm -hmm. because talking with Ben different bands or members of a band that had played there in the 70s and 80s and their recollection of what it was to play there and the sound and the acoustics and everything mm -hmm. that you spoke of, it's the same. Yes. Because it's the wood floors, the stone walls and the tin ceiling and it's just That's this right. long, it, narrow it, long, narrow room. Long, narrow room. The shotgun room. But wait, there's more. And off this room is also your pool room. Yeah, my billiards room. Your billiards room. <laughs> Do you yeah. call it billiards room or pool room? Uh, we, it depends. It really should be called the billiards room because there's a photo of my space, the building mm -hmm. that is in the downtown. I actually have a photo. I need to frame it and hang it. Um, maybe in our next interview I could say I've done that because I keep saying I'm going to do that. But going into the entrance space, which now goes into our tunnel, but at the time, 1904, I believe, or it was 04 or 07, um, the sign on the side said billiards and cigars. From now on, Stop we officially today. call the pool room <laughs> the billiards room, which will upset any other Brit that goes in there because a, a billiards table is a lot bigger than a pool table. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> okay, I didn't know that. Yeah. Have you ever seen a, an English table? I imagine where I first started bartending across the street at the Opera House. They had those massive. They're the they ones. Were beautiful. Those are those are the real billiard. There are billiard, six of them up there. Those are the real billiard tables. Yeah. No, mine is not. I know. I know yours is not. <laughs> you couldn't fit those tables in. Well, you may be able to fit one in because they're so so much right. bigger. But you've got two in there, and it, it fits perfectly. Yeah. And you've got the seating, of course, mm -hmm. and you've got the big televisions, which is yeah. nice. Oh, that's something else they didn't have in the twenties. <laughs> Yeah, no, I've had a lot of um, statements said about the, all the LED lights. But typically they're compliments because, you know, there's a lot of cool lighting. Different, you can accentuate so many different things. All the pretty bottles that are right. out today of all the different liqueurs and liquors and just the building itself. You know, you it, can run a light around the top of all the stone wall or accent the stones. Yes. Yeah. Well, so you know, cool. it's, worth, it's worth popping in just to see the bar area because the way the, the bottles all wrap around the wall mm -hmm. and the way you've got the lighting done, it really is beautiful Thank looking you. setup. Thank you. It's gorgeous. It's Mind you, I have, I have taken photographs of it. So. <laughs> Obviously, I'm, nice yeah, it, it's, it's great. So what made you think about putting on that wonderful 10th anniversary party? Oh, we had to. That's a milestone. But you made, it, really, you made it a great, oh, Gats was made a great Gatsby. I really, I had a little hiccup with getting my invitations. I started back in late October, early November, mm -hmm. and the first invitations I got back were not up to my style. Like, they just would not look, they, they were not speakeasy enough. They just were cheaply made. Uh. Um, finally got the company that did produce 
a beautiful invitation, but I got them so late. And then I didn't realize if you send them out in the mail in a black envelope that it does something with the post office, it delays you. Oh, really? So, yes, that was a lesson learned for anybody I did watching. I not know that. Yeah, black envelopes are not productive to timely mail. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have to get someone in from the post office to explain <laughs> yeah. that one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But the turnout that we had was so amazing. There was a few faces. I said all that because there was a few people that I messaged personally. But um, and plus they've moved or they're in different states, and you know I wouldn't expect everybody to come just for a ten year anniversary party. But the the turnout of I invited. I made it certain to invite ex employees, mm -hmm. um, bands, just people that karaoke host, open mic host, just an array of people who have contributed to who we are today right. because of their contribution, small or large. Sometimes it's for a short period of time and there's other employees that were there for years that are no longer here. Yeah. Life just moves you in different directions. So it was so amazing to see, to have the coming together of, and the participation. Mm -hmm. I heard a story last Saturday, this young man, it was his first time Entering the speakeasy the night of the 10 year anniversary party. Oh, nice. And his <laughs> description was hilarious. He, he was, he's 29 years old. He had learned about it. He had been doing work um, for a, a month before working with one of his buddies in another state. And this friend of his was hyping up the speakeasy and it's so much fun. Wait till you get there. And so their first night in, they got there a little early because they're young, and the, you know. Past 11 p.m. It is a whole different yes. scene. A lot of youngsters. And um, so they came a little early, and we were in there that night. Uh, we looked good. Everybody was dressed. Because we did a Gatsby party to theme the whole mm -hmm. speakeasy, Prohibition era. And all my staff and the patrons and so many people invited. I mean, I, 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 I'm at a loss of words for just the... The men were also debonair. They had grown their mustaches out to twist them up. Yeah. Bow ties. Yeah. <laughs> That's the one thing I felt upset about. I didn't think the bow tie was big enough. You looked fabulous. Thank you. You looked fabulous. Well, so did you, of course. But that's it. All the gowns and the fur and the feathers and the pearls. And uh, people really took the time to dress the role. And it was, it was just so fun. So this young man walked down. And my DJ in the front room was playing, he called it jazz. It's like a mix of mm -hmm. electronic jazz, but yeah, a lot was, of old Yeah, he was school. doing a jazz rock and blues rock fusion music. Something which really I love. cool I didn't even know existed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He walked out and he was standing at the door getting ID'd and getting his bracelet and was looking around. He was like, I didn't know what I walked into. He's like, <laughs> everybody was dressed in furs and feathers and suits. And he's like, I didn't think I was going to be able to afford a beer. And I said, had you ever seen anything like that in real life? He said, no, only the movies. <laughs> He's looking at his friend across the room like, this is not how you explain this establishment. But neither one of them knew that it was a 10-year anniversary Gatsby party. <laughs> oh, right. No, we're like this every Saturday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was pretty funny listening to their... I mean, I, I really enjoyed myself that night. Uh, just so you know, I still have the invitation. Mm. The reason is, I thought it was an absolute work of art. It really was. It, it finally it, did it, come it, through. And it just, it just, it springs out at you. Right? The way that it was done. It was Thank so, you. it was so lovely. Thank you. So I, I, I hang on to that. And of course, you also had the, uh, the two food trucks yes. out front, which was yes. nice. I'm surprised they were able to get parking, but they did. We, fin we worked out, and the snow, we did get snow that night. Yes, so we that did. Made it a little I remember difficult. it well. <laughs> But it was kind of cool. It added to the whole, because a lot of the women did have on furs, mm -hmm. the shrugs and accessories. Yes. And walking in the snow and holding somebody's arm and you're all dressed in your gown and your furs. It's just, you got to dress, like, when do you get to dress up like that? That's For right. What? I agree. And I it's agree. fun. It was fun to see everybody participate. And your son looks so smart in his all white suit. Thank you. He looked really smart. It was in actually that. his birthday that night too. No. Yeah. Oh, if I'd have known that, I'd have bought him. The ten years before that, I was in such a frantic. I needed to get open. Like I cannot wait another day. And so that day was just like, 
that register needs to like I'm I'm maxed out. We have to open for business. Right. So I actually kind of spaced his birthday out that year. Oops. Yeah, he was thirteen. Which oh, is a double, big one. double oops. I know. <laughs> oh, spank mummy. <laughs> and, it, and Facebook reminds me every year when it brings up, 10 years ago on this day, I made this post on the 29th, mm -hmm. apologizing and yeah. showing love to my son. But um, so that was kind of special. That I was, was nice. able to give him a little shout out. Also, the, where did you find that band? I'm glad you brought that <laughs> They were absolutely <laughs> superb. They were. There was two bands that played that night. The first band was the George Nelson Band, mm -hmm. which was my very first band to play oh, okay. on my grand opening night nice. 10 years prior. Um, George Nelson, bless his heart, he's, he's in his 90s, mm -hmm. and he's, still, he's out there playing. He's still he's doing just, it. He's just as great as I imagine as ever. He's, 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 he's special. So they played the first set, and then the second band, they're called Hand Turkey, mm -hmm. but they're a group of youngsters and a lot of horns and a lot of talent. And they, they brought the vibe. I mean, they had the right music for that night, and right. it was so high energy, and maybe everybody didn't know the songs, you know, to like sing along with or to, Dance too, but the dance floor was full and everybody just enjoyed them. So it, they were perfect. You were that's absolutely what, right. Yeah. That's what absolute counts. I mean, I, I doubt whether anyone left there frowning. I think everyone was beaming. Yeah. You know, because it was such a good evening. Yeah, it was. Except for the food trucks. They were really cool. They were, it was, yeah. that was like a negative seven degree. It night. was. <laughs> Those people were like, uh, is it over yet? We're frozen. I felt so bad for oh, them. Oh, dear. But so. so if I'm still around in 10 years' time, I will look forward to the 20th anniversary. Right? How am I going to top 10? <laughs> Sorry? How, however am I going to top 10 years? <laughs> like, yeah. it was such a great... I, I truly left that night feeling so blessed and so just blessed, grateful, because I'm going to give a shout-out to Sherry. Sherry is my manager bartender like she is my right hand mm -hmm. she's been there 10 years with me oh wow she's helped me together yes we learned so much from one another and she's so solid and whenever i hire somebody new i always tell them when you when you interact with sherry and you're talking to sherry you can go on ahead and imagine my face being right there because like she is me <laughs> right <laughs> and the 10 years of us getting to that, that was special for us too, because we were both just like, wow. Bars come and go. They really do. And some of them come and go incredibly quickly. The Speakeasy is just a, a, a magical place here in Longmont. It really is. Have you ever been down to the Speakeasy in, in Denver? <laughs> um, I believe there's several of them. There are, at there's this a couple. Point. Yeah. But no. No. I don't know which one specifically you're thinking. I'm not thinking of any particular one. Oh. I didn't know whether you just, you know. Went. No, I hadn't. Honestly, I the building, I had never even heard the word speakeasy before. Right. Doing research on knowing that it was built by a Chicago colony, being from the Midwest myself, that was very interesting to me. So I just went on this whole search about the tunnels and. Yeah. And it took me to a website, Roaring in the Twenties, Chicago Roaring in the Twenties, and found the word speakeasy and with that everything just kind of came and I already knew I was going to do that era theme I just didn't know the word and right. I thought I was onto something so brand new and yeah. then the Gatsby the movie the Gatsby came out oh yeah right while we were remodeling I was like yes <laughs> you couldn't have any better like promotion that I'm not promoting this is out here in the theaters everybody's watching this Gatsby movie with done so well yeah now we're gonna have our very own speakeasy so but i really thought i was at the forefront of something epic <laughs> <laughs> no sorry <laughs> no they're everywhere my feelings kept getting hurt all the time people would, oh have you been to the one in philadelphia or the one in you know all these different yeah. big cities <laughs> what no so anyways, yeah. we're special. We're at Colorado, Longmont. You're, co you're in Longmont, Colorado. You've got this wonderful, wonderful bar sitting right on 3rd and Main. Who yes. could ask for anything more? <laughs> Except I have to drive there, which is a shame, because <laughs> I live too far away to stagger home. But that's another story. <laughs> and we should mention it, just in case people didn't watch the first interview, 
This was a speakeasy back in the 20s. Sarah has done her research. This was actually a speakeasy taking over from a speakeasy. Yeah. It's amazing. Full circle. History repeats itself, right? And I bet there are not too many speakeasies that actually that can actually, claim that, right. can, can prove right. that they used to be a real speakeasy in the 20s. Yeah. It is pretty cool. It, it is. It goes back to the early 1904, 07. I need to figure out which year. It's one of those two years where there was billiards and cigars. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that was pre-prohibition. Yes. They're down there shooting, shooting pool and smoking cigars. That's right. And there's the whole tunnel system. And the tunnels, the tunnels are interesting because, unfortunately, a lot of them have been filled in now yes. for, for reasons. But with the speakeasy, Sarah's speakeasy, you can see the entrance to the tunnels. You can see where the tunnels actually ran. Uh, there's one that goes behind the bar area, but there's also another one up by the stage area. Yeah. And that gives you a really good indication of what these tunnels really look like. Yeah. Well, they, they're all through from third street. It might even go down further. I don't know if I could say that factually, but I do know that on the south side of third street, those big buildings, those historic buildings also had the tunnels. Yes. I do know that for a fact. But the tunnels, they go all the way up for blocks. Yes. And you're right. A lot of them have been filled in. Yeah. There, there's a construction project going on right now on 9th and Main. And when they leveled that, I saw them, I saw them because I drive by every day to take my mm -hmm. daughter to school and I could see them filling in. There was a tunnel there and I was like, oh, oh so cool. I'd have a little bit of history vanished. Can you imagine if we had all these, if we just had kept those intact, we could, Longmont could really do something, they could have done something cool with that. They really could. <laughs> In anyway. fact, if they'd have kept all the tunnels, we could actually have gone on a pub crawl without actually ever going out into daylight. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah, once again, thank you so much for coming down to the studio. The 10th anniversary was a wonderful day. It really yeah. was. Thoroughly enjoyed it. I took a ton of photographs and, you know, you've seen the results of those. Yeah. And it really was just a wonderful, wonderful evening, wonderful time. But, you know, I love, I used to go down there when it was Cheers. Mm -hmm. um, I love the, I love the space. I've always loved the space. Right. It's just that now it's 180 degrees difference from what Cheers was to what you are. Thank you but so I much. But I enjoyed both spaces. Right. It, it's the and space. It's, it's the, it's it the space. It is so magical. And that is a word that I heard repeated yeah. after our 10 year anniversary party from patrons that had attended. It was magical. It was, it, because it really was. Like to have so many people from so many different facets of life, different walks of life. Like right. All different. All mingling. All showing up looking super sharp, I mean, dressed to the hilt, mm -hmm. and just so happy, and f cameras flashing, and everybody posing and pretty, and the music was, like, it, the, it just was, it was perfect. It was. It was good. I think we Thank will you. call it quits right there, because yes, I think you did a great summation <laughs> there. Thank you very much for tuning in to this Rational Speakeasy. I'm Nigel Aves, your host. I want to once again thank Sarah very much for coming down to the studio to record this show. Everyone out there, stay safe, stay merry. And if you've got nothing to do after four o'clock in the afternoon, third and main, the speakeasy, come down, have a beer, have a cocktail, have a top shelf. If you've got a couple of hundred bucks in your pocket, I'm sure Sarah <laughs> will sell you one of her very expensive brandies. Just come and enjoy yourselves. It's a great place. Anyway, everybody, thanks so much for tuning in. Bye for now. Bye, thank you.